Good evening, everyone, in our small and intimate poetry reading. Thank you for joining us. We're also really delighted to be recording this, and it'll be on our YouTube page very soon. Uh, I'm Michelle DeMarzo. I'm the Curator of Education in the Fairfield University Art Museum. My pleasure to uh, welcome you to our evening with poet Maya Islas, who's joined us here from the much warmer lands that are Texas. We are delighted to have her here with us at Fairfield. Uh, Maya is a longtime friend since 1978, I learned this morning, of the artist, uh, my, uh, artist Gladys Triana, who, if you don't know, her work is on view over in the Walsh Gallery in the Quick Center, Gladys Triana Beyond Exile. So these two ladies have been friends or perhaps sisters since the 1970s, and we are very thankful that the exhibition's curator, Adriana Herrera, was the one who suggested that we should reach out to Gladys's friend, Maya, to bring her to Fairfield as a to share how her work in the literary form of poetry is a counterpoint to what Gladys has been exploring in sculpture and paint and film over the past decades. So like Gladys, poet and educator Maya Islas was born on the island of Cuba. And like Gladys, she left her homeland in her case at the age of 17. Uh, she's been living in the United States for the past several decades. And although she now lives in Texas, for more than two decades, she worked as an educational counselor in New York City at the New School. She taught Hispanic, Spanish at Baruch College and also at the University of Houston. So she's had a, wild, a varied background in the educational field. But in her literary work, Islas was the co-founder and co-editor of the literary magazine Palabras y Papel. Her collections of poetry include Alta Zora Dos, Quemando Luces, Merla, Alta Zora Acompañando a Vicente, and I apologize for my pronunciation of Spanish, for it is not one that comes easily to the tongue, Italian only for me. Uh, Two-time finalist for the Letras de Oro, she has been awarded a Cintas Fellowship in Literature and a Latino Literature Prize from the Latin American Writers Institute, among other honors. Although Maya chiefly writes in her native Spanish, although she just corrected me and says she has been writing in both languages now for many years, She's going to be sharing some of her poems with us in English translation, along with some of the originals. So that regardless of your facility with Spanish, you can at least experience the prosody of her compositions in their original tongue after we hear their translations into English as well. And as she shared with me this morning, talking about the, career, the path that her career and her life has taken, she said her poetry was never enough to pay the bills alone, but that it nourished her spirit. So please join me in welcoming Maya Islas to share some of that nourishment with us tonight. I just want to, well, already you know Maya Islas and my name there, and I want to give uh, thanks to the university and to this wonderful group of people um, who have been so kind to uh, investigate not only Gladys for allowing me to be with her today um, because of the kind of work that we were doing. It wasn't for me painting, it was just to write. And she was completely gone um, into the Victorian side. So I appreciate that you have taken that percentage of her in the presentation while I'm reading. Um, I'm bilingual, I was telling them. And uh, I brought my favorite Spanish uh, poems. Poems is the mystery. And, um, but I'm aware that I also write in English. I found out myself when things happen, I went into the English language. I call it the language that I use when I'm in pain, and I have done that. Um, I want to, I have so many things that I can share with you, but I know that time is short. And uh, first, I want you to know part of the poems, because I think it's important that you know what goes with the poem and the situation of the poems that provoke um, this kind of poetry writing. Um, today, I, I was invited to attend a class that it was wonderful. Kids who were going into the uh, first year for writing 
poetry and I have to share with them uh, whatever I learn, not through techniques, but yet through life. Life is the best way to learn. I'm going to begin and tell you an example. At the time that I was at Parsons, I work in, a, in an office for students who were attending Parsons School of Design, which is under the new school. That's in New York City. And um, there were several counselors in my office. And one of those counselors lost her, her husband due to a, a, I don't want to say, but you know, the difficult illness that is killing a lot of people. And that was in the 1996, long time ago. Um, the counselor left the school but returned and be, was working as a counselor as I was working as a counselor. We have offices one to one. And we decided, because she's also told me I'm also a poet. So she said, I think we need some healing. What about if we write to each other all the sensations of life? I think it's the best example I can give you of what it is when things are happening and nobody knows. But if you have someone to lean, it sounds like the sun, um, it's, it's, it's very powerful because at the end, uh, the healing was completed, and uh, but the poems stay. So we, uh, as together, like two, power, two poets and two counselors at the same time, a title, and the title is the cal calendar book, Two Counselors in Need of Poetry, or Two Poets in Need of Counseling. And uh, we began the sharing through the computers. Um, and I had to begin, she asked me, uh, in the conversation we had, um, I want you to begin, blue, 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 and I will answer in a poems uh, way. Instead of talking, we are going to do the poems. So I remember even how I sat in there and sat in front of the computer and said, well, let me see. What is it? Because I knew the situation and I had my own situations. Different situations, but, you know, suffering issues. And the calendar book has a point number one, and I began. Today, we spoke about the petty things of life also about big things, like the one experience that made us large as a globe in orbit when the ellipse was discovered. Who knows, friend of mine, we kept talking about cookies salivating between laugh when we remembered how we used to pretend not to eat what we like M&M's, rice cake with raisins, so much to be alive for. Love your body. We have said to each other, craving for a pain that seems to hide among the layers of us, the believers. A face, one leg, a neck saying something primal, a line across the muscles like a thick twist of melancholy. It is the truth of all. We die every moment. When we see this trans transitory journey, we are a diary of some sort with words fading after a thunderstorm had hit them. 
no use at night i feel a rope within a strong a struggling below some children's legs ch jumping between teeth like a rock i guess for you life has been the same a soul running from north to south in flesh stretching as a map without cities a geodesical triangle hitting the heart and the breast so round we are essential landscape seem to understand the need we had to become whole like a clown on a sunday circus the catharsis has been letting go of the defenses applauding what we did not know when all we had loved escaped as water i wrote the poems and you sang the songs two spasms two amoebas in a life lab reacting to life is a lot of symbols. Um, I'm going to read the poem to she's sending, but I don't have the permission to. Um, there were several. And number two, when it was my time, again, the poem becomes the daily life of our conversations. The chocolate fulfilling the void caused by PMS. The sensations of feeling good about containing whatever it is with a little hope here and there. The search grows like a child in the womb, but nine months is not enough for the lover to find the beloved. And by this, I mean two portions of the self watching each other in a mirror. We are a bunch of blind people looking out there, following the roads with a cane that doesn't know where it goes either. I am glad the space has been created to accommodate these fears of ours words are very complete we don't need to bend them for any eye to see words are walking by themselves through human sidewalks cautiously and that sometimes uh, i want to clarify that i love to take objects or situations like if they were people so when i when i complete that i like otherwise i erase <laughs> um would you like a little spanish and let me see it was impossible for me to i get very nervous at home and then I'm pushing things around and go back and back. Um, I'll, let me see Spanish. This I wrote to friends. I used to, um, it's better for me to get a message to, pe to, se to people I love or it, it's, it really creates the poem it's not only for me but i'm talking to you it's a dialogue and um, they don't answer to me in the sense of the poem but they know that i'm just so these are two friends who were having problems and and here the counselor but it has nothing to do with counseling it's just a human being si fuera necesario Escucharía a Lecuona mientras pienso en ustedes. Las 
oficina huele a un campo de flores. Otro país me envía su silencio. Ventanita pequeña, maderas de naranja. Los libros tienen cara de mujer, apretaditas todas del verbo nace y llora. Tengo urgencia. Borro las líneas del papel y el poema se desmaya orgánicamente sobre mi seno. De aquí hasta allá el agua aparece una pared, un caracol vertical que se equivoca. No hay quien nade buscando una playa en el invierno, pero he aprendido a desdoblarme con un pie que roza la montaña, el cuerpo de una nube. Manos de sol dobladas entre las suyas, amor lejano son, pero cantan en mi pecho tres corazones, un árbol. Ese es otro de esos poemas mandados. Para que no sea tanto, no. In order to have uh, a change a little bit, uh, I want to read my artist statement. We all have to do it. You don't have to be a painter or whatever. You have to know. So um, I found in, a, in one of my crazy things, <laughs> the information I wrote years ago for Sintas, I think it was. And I said, back to English. Since the mid 90s, my poetic work has been focused in exploring the visual and the interchanging of ideas, works through collaborative work. The aesthetics in my poetic work is best expressed when my creative energy move from one mode of expression into the other. We discuss that in the class. The work becomes images and vice versa. The exploration of such concept has also stayed within myself by the use of journal format poetry combined with my own expressions of visual art, using the collage on images. Many times I have stripped my poems from reality, based concepts, and moved them within the use of symbols and metaphors. My poetry can be painted. My work approaches life experiences, love, pain, loss, self, fulfillment questions through using surrealism, symbolism, and mythology. A sense of the woman archetypes, mother, lover, warrior, goddess, are sources of power in artistic expression. So uh, I don't use this right now, but I always keep it just in case a situation like today, I can tell you exactly what, what can I express. Now, quemando luces. You can see Emily Dickinson here. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's my collage because I, I have been obsessed with this woman, uh, reading and getting. And one time, I'm, I'm giving you anecdotes so you know how the, everything began. I was um, one day in my office, falling apart for all the things that happened to me. And one day I said, please, God, give me an answer to why my karma is like this. 
I'm going to go out to Fifth Avenue and I'm going to walk for all, all stores, uh, antique stores of old books. And maybe I can find an answer like that. So you tell me so I can begin to pay my karma. So I did that. All in my mind, I mean, they don't know in classes, I'm going to lunch. You know how we do. Um, in my I going to lunch, I went to a place old, and suddenly in one corner, I see Emily Dickinson, the book, not of her with the poems, but a professor in Chapel Hill that at the beginning of the sentence decided to do the study of Emily Dickens. It happened that uh, I'm reading all that and the story is worse than mine. <laughs> worse than mine. And I said, oh my God, this is, you know, I, I should be grateful because there are other people suffering more. And then I use my imagination and say, Okay, I'm going to write this book in which I'm, I'm going to be a, like a character asking for uh, forgiveness, which is something hard to do. Uh, you have to, to ask that someone forgive you because you didn't function well. So then uh, I did that and wrote the book in Miami. I went to see my mother in Hialeah when she was listening to music, Cuban music. I was listening to this book. That, that was so magical that I cannot see how because you are in a reality and the second reality. And the commando loses when I finish in my character, in which I'm writing to Emily Dickinson, talking to her, saying, please forgive me, or whatever, you know, but in very nice metaphors and beautiful things. Um, I chose Commando Luces because I knew in when I was reading that there was a Elizabeth Barrett Browning that all of you know, uh, was very famous in the 19th century. And Emily, she was alive really, was reading and there was somebody else's friends and whatever that women were reading Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And Elizabeth Barrett Browning write a, like a poem to her husband, the other poet. And uh, she is expressing uh, the best thing that she can give him as love. Or, so I translated the line that she said, I'm going to a chiquitico, little one, in which she says the, uh, about quemando luces, saying uh, burning lights is how you translate that into English. So I, I wrote in the book, y en mi hogar de Tosca encontrarás un nicho y quemaré las luces del amor frente a tu cara, that's the line, de manera que en gravedad y santa calma podamos tú y yo vivir hacia la más verdadera vida. That is written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. So I use it in the book at the entrance. So I can use Quemando Luces, but it was my translation. I was trying to say, ING, let's see how I'm going to translate this. Um, well, the book was done. And I use a collage of situations. I dedicate the book. This is why I'm telling all this, because I'm going to read the, the writer that I dedicated the book, and it's um, Virginia Woolf. 
in ese poema, I was in my office and I put the hours. I was telling some of you, I, I, I brought my CD today because I thought I could put the hours while I was reading, but I, I think it's not possible. So I'm just telling. Um, and everything in the book is written in Spanish. But I took one of the poems and have it in English. So I can share that with you. And what I will do, I'll, I'll read in English. So the English people, the speaking people know what happened or what is it that is happening in this poem. And then I will say it in Spanish very softly, but now you know the theme. Okay. It is okay? Okay. Um, the English part. Divine Comedy. That's my, my own title. Okay. And to a small uh, a thing. The outward circumstances unfold. My favorite human reaction is to realize that my power swims across my body like a fish discovering a deep ocean. Symbols are all over the senseless motion of the soul walking in an unfinished country. Wider and wider, my reality indicates a fate that seems to surround a river behind my eye. Any color is possible. A subtle identification falls upon the hand that applauds without the other. Not knowing in that vacuum, love rides a horse. Could we climb the throne of the discovery? My mirror reflects a different scenery. Your face becomes another breaking the distance. I was grateful to know how well I can handle, handle empty space. Eyes not knowing what to say against the full moon. There are falls from my body as if it were a garment too large to wear. The comedy, the comedy is not always divine, but it's all what we have. Exquisite sensibilities are disappearing like light in a sunset, dissolving danger. A godly moment between breath, breath stop the poet from having the poem as her beloved. Walking among towers of a dream, a consciousness like glass explodes in a humble song of water, feeling the integrity of my voice and a self that moves towards nothingness to have it all. That's one of the poems from the translation. I don't know if you would like to hear the little Spanish or you, okay. I understand if you don't want to. Okay. Este puede ser el momento. Cuando me deslizo hacia el sonido para pensar la canción de la palabra, el oro me acompaña, atraviesa la ventana de mi alma. Me viste de sol cabalgando entre casas que saltan para proteger la verdad. Hay un espacio que tiene la esencia de la distancia 
donde caigo como flor sin sembrar en el verano. Y es que puedo tocar el universo sin que nada desvíe los pedazos mágicos de la mujer que tiene sus ojos en la vida. Soy del aire, ella del agua, digo lo que puedo mirando los dedos del poema, las esquinas que esconden su vida y mis imágenes para aquellos que pintan el color del camino y hurgan en las piedras con átomos humanos. En las rutas del tiempo yo he comprendido quién sube o desciende hacia el verbo, quién bendice la lengua como si fuera un ala, quién cuenta las horas con los ojos transparentes del iluminado. Y yo creo, if I'm not, uh, that it was, okay. I, I, I read the wrong one. <laughs> you thought so. But actually, it was my favorite, so I went to there and I said, I cannot stop. So now I will tell the divine comedy. La circunstancia, aún now you are going to hear in, in Spanish what I said in English. You know Spanish a little bit. Uh, <laughs> no, because she knows. Las circunstancias exteriores se desplazan. Mi reacción favorita es darme cuenta que mi poder nada a través de mi cuerpo como un pez que descubre la profundidad del océano. Los símbolos cubren el movimiento sin sentido del alma que camina sobre un país sin terminar. Ensanchándose, mi realidad indica un destino que rodea un río detrás de mi ojo. Cualquier color es posible. Una sutil identificación cae sobre la mano que aplaude sin la otra, sin saber que en ese sonido el amor cabalga. Podemos escalar el trono del descubrimiento. Mi espejo refleja un escenario diferente. Tu cara se convierte en otra, rompiendo la distancia. Agradezco el poder manejar el espacio vacío, los ojos sin saber qué decir frente a la luna llena. La comedia no siempre es divina pero es todo lo que hay. La sensibilidad desaparece como una luz en el atardecer. Un momento entre respiraciones disuelve el peligro, detiene a la poeta de poseer el poema como si fuera su amada. Caminando entre las torres de un sueño, una conciencia como de cristal explotaba en la canción humilde del agua, llenando la integridad de mi voz. Y al ser que se mueve hacia la nada para tenerlo todo. Y yo creo que ya con eso, ¿verdad? Gracias. You have any questions or something? <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> you have a question? No? Sí. Your poetry can you make it? Has anyone ever made it? I'm not too sure. I do I do the that I do the visuals for other people's poems, but and I do my own, but I don't know. I'm I'm giving the the okay in a way because there are artists who don't like to give their work and saying I I work a lot with artists 
are only photography, this and that. And those poems are the best. And my follow-up question is, you said most of your poems are taken from an experience you had. Have you ever done a poem that is ekphrastic, that's based on an artwork that you responded to, as opposed to an event in life? I can, I can also do that, or, or I have done it. I have a lot of, it's almost a backpack that I brought and left pieces of papers and whatever, but the more you, it, it, it waits after a while. I have to work and, and do the work in terms of putting that into books and whatever. Uh, and I have digital books. The lifting is one. And there are others. I wrote Canciones Asomadas based on Rilke, the poet, the German poet. I don't know, in Spanish we say Rilke, but I don't know how Rilke. Yeah, but I love him. And, um, well. I think that the way that you write poems always, that I read it, and I have a lot of your books, when you feel expressing yourself, you are more into your language. The translation has to be done by simply for another person. It's and not the translation. It's that when I read it, I have a heavy accent because there are words that I cannot pronounce well. And that's the, I'm doing that because I had to, to well, give whatever. No, no, but I do prefer the Spanish, don't take me, because I know I, I can manage that much better. No, but I think that if you can express in English, with the vibration that you have, the sound, the music. Oh, yes, all Spanish. The thing that you have in Spanish is different. Oh, definitely. I'm doing that with pain because I know I don't pronounce well. <laughs> but I think it's necessary. Freedom, freedom is different. It's the language. I, I know, Gladys, I, I know no, what you're saying. I think it's necessary that you uh, get it translated. Yeah. Well, because who's going to pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the translator. <laughs> who's going to pay for that? I remember Magalia Lavao paying $300, $400 for two pages. And that's why I changed my, my route. I said, no, mm, not me. Can you imagine, you know, unless you have a grant or something. I mean, it's not of importance to me because I know the English words are correct. It's just that I, I cannot, um, you see, I cannot move with the same rhythm as in Spanish. I read better in Spanish. But I'm glad that you, I was just going to say that I, uh, there was also Gladys, that I'm glad that you read in both English and Spanish. I myself don't speak Spanish at all, but it was beautiful hearing. I'm glad that you read in both English and Spanish because I don't speak Spanish, but I like hearing all of the, you, you have a beautiful use of words. And so in English, I was able to hear the, sim the symbolism and the emotions and the pictures, but in the Spanish, I can hear the music, right? Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I thought that was very well. I'm glad that I was able to come and hear you read it because I wouldn't be able to get yeah. that myself reading it in the Spanish. So thank you. Um, I was using a, a method that probably is like a class. I did it as a class like giving you a story, how it was written, and why the theme. Because these are from the 1990s, beginning of 2000. 
but I'm writing different now. And not that I'm rejecting my work as it, as it is, uh, but uh, I have more at another level, but uh, this I have to plan that in a better way, you know, because I haven't uh, read uh, recently. So, but I have the material and the forms and when Iraida Iturral, the Centro Cultural Cubano, is doing some videos with my work too. And it's funny because they, they are in, in, that was a Cuban thing. Uh, a group of, of people, uh, you were ill, but there was a group in Elena's house and, and I was reading the poems, the new ones. And it's called El Rio Danza. And I took that from River Dance. And the reason why I'm not doing something wrong is just that the rhythm of when you see the, the people dancing with the River Dance music, there is something that tells me that it could be so beautiful in poetry. So I began working with that movement and now it's less words and then but moving, moving, moving down like when you do with the with your feet. So but I I really appreciate that because when you find a translator who wants to do it, tell me Gladys, you say my friend needs to translate. But I have to do the editing because once a Mexican poet, Angela de Hoyos, she was translating my a poem. And she sent it to me and to say, do you think it's okay? It wasn't okay. Why? Because she was, she's an educated person and she was um, actually translating through the language level intense that is different from the regular. And I said, no, but when you say that, you are completely changing the meaning. And I, I asked, I had to edit this because otherwise I will then, you know, I knew that it was wrong. And since that time, I don't let, I, I would like to see what I'm translating because I say, oh yes, you got my effort. You know exactly what I meant. And then it would be wonderful, except for the 400 dots. <laughs> Anything else? Still on the topic of translation, I was wondering if there are any <clears throat> emotions or concepts that are easier for you to express in Spanish and that you would find just impossible to translate into English. And also on the flip side, if there are, if there is ever a time when you're like, I really just want to say this in English and that's the best way that I can actually express what I want to say. As a bilingual person, I find myself, you know, drawn to wanting to to use French, my native language, when I speak about something emotional. But if I'm speaking business, I'm very uncomfortable talking business in French. I want to speak English when I do business. Yeah, there are a lot of issues. And one of them is the, sometimes in each language, you can have idioms, words that you learned when you were a child. And if you are born in that culture, something that has no meaning whatsoever, you understand right away because it means that. Um, and in Cuba, there are a lot of that kind of a language. Uh, you have to be Cuban to, to know. Otherwise, not even, for example, people from Puerto Rico will, if you face them with uh, Cuban poems, that probably will have that kind of secret código uh, they will say, I don't know what they are saying, and, and there are the same languages, I mean, if, if Espanol. 
So it's very inter interesting to have uh, something like that. That's why you need to edit if the person is not from your same culture. I don't think English is that difficult at that level because we don't have the same. But all this um, Central America, Mexico, all those, the Spanish, including Spain, you do have to know. It's not the same sandalia con chancletas, which means, you see, in, in Cuba, you have a, a, a place that maybe pair of sandals, uh, the ones that you, you used to go to, to the beach and whatever, and in, in certain places, chancletas. In other, it will be sandalias, or there are like three or four words. If you be in Cuba are in the wrong province, you have to find out what are they saying. And it's the same group. So imagine something who, like you were saying, not only about a word, also the French example. If you get used to do something this way and you have to translate, no, I prefer to do it in my language because I can do business before or better. All of that is the sound of the words changes the meaning. The meaning. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.